So today's lesson is going to be on a Charlie Patton song called Shake It and Break It. And to get this song, you'll have to have your guitar in E standard tuning. So I'm actually tuned a whole step below standard, so with this capo, it should be all in tune. And the basic chords that you'll need to know for this song will be F, just the, uh, the most basic F chord there is. So oftentimes with a bar on the top few strings, then these uh, C7 shape. So that's just your basic C chord, but with a pinky finger on the third fret of the G string. And um, also just a, a B6, um, sort of B6 chord. So that'll be a bar across the top three strings on the third fret. And that's really all you'll need. Shake it and break it starts with that F shape. And when you're playing this song, you'll notice that Charlie Patton plays an alternating bass almost throughout the song. So when playing that F chord shape, starting with the alternating bass, it'll be... And of course you'll notice on the second and fourth beats, it'll actually be a double stop. So, so try and get used to getting an even sound across both of those strings with your thumb. It is a little bit different from playing just single strings. And for the melody on for the guitar part, he just plays the top three strings. So that kind of sounds like this. So again, and then with the bass part, And in terms of fingering, you can do it any way you want with your right hand, but I find what works best is playing that... the melody part with the top three... with the, with the three fingers. And then when you're coming in with the thumb on those second and fourth beats, you almost just move your hand. And it actually works quite well because it fits in with the C7 chord that comes right after. And the C7 chord is really just the same idea. You're picking the top three strings with your um, fingers for the melody line. And for the bass, you're doing that same sort of... On, in that you're catching on the second and fourth beats more than one string. this is a C7 shape so um, as was mentioned before you'll be having that pinky finger on the third fret of the G string in addition to that regular C shape and so during the verses it's really just going back and forth from that C to the F but there is something that he adds in as a little nuance that gives it a more authentic sound. And that's his addition of open strings between playing each chord. So I'll kind of show you how that sounds. So to get that, you'll really have to start slow, and um, I'll show you how to do it with your right hand. So it's really um, sort of snuck in there in between each chord. So the way to practice this best, I would think, will be just to um, start with that pickup in with the open strings into the next chord. So it'll be, um, well the way I play it will be um, open A string muted with your right hand and then top three strings open. So 
So again. And once more, even more slow. And then when you include that first chord, the turnaround of the song and that'll be played with that bar across the top three strings on the third fret and that'll be your B flat chord so just hit it three times and then the open string top three strings and then you'll be playing your F chord shape but again just the top three strings so all together that's And then you'll be playing the C7 shape. And sometimes he includes the alternating bass line just for that C7 shape during the turnaround. And sometimes he doesn't. For example, in the intro, he doesn't include the bass line, only the top three strings. But when he's singing, he does include it. So we'll just include it here. And then for the final chord, it's just like the F chord shape, but he plays it only a little bit differently when he includes that pinky finger on the third fret of the B string with that F shape, making it an F6 chord. So altogether that's... having trouble going from the C7 into the F6, sometimes it helps to actually keep your thumb behind the neck, pointing straight up to the ceiling, because that is the most comfortable um, position for your hand when playing that F chord. So if you prepare for it while you're playing that C chord, some people find that a lot easier. Otherwise, you can just have it, have your thumb up. So I'll play the entire song slow for you just so that you can get an idea for how it all sounds put together. <laughs> 